Um, I think they handed out these startup checklists here, so I'm gonna start going through some of these as, as I go. Don't, don't take any chances lighting, lighting fire in your evaporator if you're not absolutely sure that you have a, a sap supply going in because it will evaporate the contents of your evaporator and run dry within a couple of minutes. And when that happens, it's gonna scorch your sugar. Everything that's in your evaporator will be uh, waste. It'll also damage your pan. If you ever run a pan dry, the floor of the pan will warp. It will. So thawing out, we'll make sure that the float box is thawed out. Even though the liquid in your pan is, might not be frozen, it's very possible that the float box will be. It's removed from the main body of liquid and it's out on its own. It's a smaller volume that can freeze very easy. Also, the contents of your float box may not be very dense in sugar. It may be mostly water, which makes it much more apt to freeze. But so vegetable oil or defoamers can freeze. They can, they can become coagulated to the point where you can't get it squirted out. Get that thought out. The pump that you're using in your, in your tank, let's just say you dropped your, your pump in or you have an auxiliary pump that isn't submersible, make sure that that's completely thought out so it can distribute sap readily as it needs to. Auto draw off system. Keep in mind as barometric pressures change, uh, there's a few other elements that can, can influence them. They may not be perfectly accurately set. My favorite way of testing that is to just uh, wait, my, wait till my auto draw off kicks in, starts taking syrup off and check it with a hydrometer. That's the best method. Adjust from there. If your syrup is too heavy, lower the temperature. If your syrup is too light, raise the temperature. Toggle the switch on and off that, uh, that manually opens the valve, the electronic valve. Make sure that that's readily opening and closing. Otherwise, you're in for a surprise when syrup is ready to come off. If there's some malfunction, you don't want to learn then. You, you, want, to, you want to get that ironed out ahead of time. The auto draws have a, just a stainless steel probe. They're either quarter inch diameter or 3 16 diameter. Scotch-Brite works well on that. Otherwise, soaking it in a, like a vinegar water solution or a very light acid will clean it. Make sure the pans are ready to go. Pan gaskets are in place. The gaskets underneath your pan, they're not just a buffer to keep your pan off your arch, they're an insulator. Everything about an evaporator should be airtight. You should have no air leaking in anywhere. These gaskets are very important to have in place. There's rail gaskets here. If you have a two-pan system, which a lot of you might have, a two-pan system will also have a, a, a gasket that spans across the arch between the pans and also one back here. If you were to run a two-pan system without that gasket in place, you're inviting cold air to be pulled in by your chimney. That cold air will get pulled in, drawn along your flues in your pan, and exhausted. That cold air is just killing your boil. It's robbing heat. It's wasting time. Make sure the front pan is clean. You'll have a good idea from yesterday's boil how clean the pans are, if the pan needs to be reversed or cleaned out by soaking it in a vinegar water solution. Make sure that that's done before you get going again. Finally, check the level in the flue pan. I'm going to open up this valve now and get the sap running in. If the evaporator is brand new, run it deep. Error to the, to the safe side. More sap in your pans is, is safer than not very much sap in the pans. So I would aim for about two inches of depth in the pans, and I guess we'll do that today. Uh, we'll, we'll start at about two inches of depth. So now the sap is running into my float box. Uh, I'm gonna keep my eyes open for leaks on all these different fittings, make adjustments as necessary. Is to, once you have sap in your head tank, just make sure you see it coming out. It's flowing freely through into your float box. Make sure you can see that. If you have a two pan system, you probably have a transfer valve in between the two pans. If you close that, on shutdown the previous night, make very sure that you open it again. A lot of front pans have been destroyed by that valve not being open until it was too late. So we've completed our, our checklist here and I'm ready to light a fire. There's still 